Hey everyone, welcome to the seventh episode of this Web API design series. This series is for those of you who are getting started with API development, and I hope to cover all the major topics that you need to know to make you a skilled backend API engineer. Okay, so this video is about API versioning, but I'm probably going to make multiple videos about versioning as it's quite a broad topic. For the scope of this video, we'll talk about why we version APIs in the first place and a versioning strategy called additive change. So why do we version APIs? As you add new features to your API, fix existing issues, or even revamp the behavior of your system, you need to be able to deliver these changes to your consumers in a non-disruptive manner. For example, Let's say you built an API that allows users to retrieve data about your crypto projects. This project has gained some popularity and you have thousands of websites using your API. They are consuming your data to build amazing dashboards and more cool things. Now, let's say you want to change the data contract of your response object. This change can be a field name change, it can be the addition of a new field, or it can be a change in the entire data contract itself. Now, if you went ahead and changed the name of an existing field, the applications your consumers have built may stop working or start throwing errors. To fix this, you'd need to reach out to all of your consumers and ask them to change their applications to work with your newest changes. If this happens on a regular basis, your consumers will not be happy about it. This is where versioning comes in. Whenever there's a change you want to release, you upgrade the version of your API and release it in a way that gives users an opportunity to accept your new changes if they choose to. What this basically means is, once a client starts consuming your API, they expect it to work as they were promised it would. All new changes or versions need to be accepted by your clients. That's why designing for change is essential for APIs. You should consider versioning to ensure you deliver changes to your consumers in a clear, consistent, and well-documented manner. So we've talked about what API versioning is and why you need it. Now let's talk about some possible approaches we can use for versioning. So there is additive change strategy, which is the main focus of this video today. But there is also explicit version strategy. This approach is far more commonly used, especially in enterprise applications. I'll make another video talking about this strategy because there's quite a lot to cover about this one. So let's move on to additive change strategy. So additive change strategy, how does it work? In this approach, you release changes of your API, but without any breaking changes. It means that any updates to your API have to be compatible with previous versions. So in theory, there's a bunch of stuff that you're not allowed to do. The first being that you can't change the behavior of an existing API endpoint. For example, you can't change a post endpoint from creating a resource to accepting to create a resource. That means you can't change it from being a request response style API to an event driven API. Now, another thing you can't do is remove or rename any parameters or fields. This is much like the example we talked about before. So the third thing that you're not allowed to do is change a type for a response field. For example, if you stored numeric values as strings, but now you want to change them to integers, well, you can't really do that. The fourth and the final thing is that you can't change error codes. Now, having said that, there are a few things that you are allowed to do. You can add new fields. You can add new endpoints. You are allowed to change a response field if the user chooses to opt in to that change via request parameters. That last one is a bit of a contradiction, isn't it? Well, not really. The main idea here is to not have any breaking changes. As long as users have the chance to opt in, we are not breaking any existing code. For example, 
let's say that you have the following response in our fictitious crypto API. When you first released the project, you thought it was a good idea to include the roadmap data of your project. And after several complaints from consumers that they don't always need the roadmap data and it's just adding to the network load, you've decided to remove it. With the additive change strategy, you can't simply get rid of it. While several consumers have complained about it, you still may have a few clients using this data. So no breaking changes. However, we can remove it as long as users opt into this change. So we can add a query parameter to get the users to consent like this. Notice how we include the exclude roadmap equals true query parameter to indicate that we want to use the newest version of this API that excludes roadmap data. So that way we are solving this problem for the ones who have the issues, but we're not breaking it for the ones that don't. And this is quite frankly, the most basic way of explaining what an additive change strategy is all about. Now, it is worth noting that in additive change strategy, adding new changes is not considered a breaking change. However, you need to be really careful because there are some exceptions to this rule. For example, you can't add a required query parameter. In our example before, you can't make the exclude roadmap query parameter a required one. So this is a case of adding a change that disrupts the existing behavior and is therefore a no-go in this strategy. Another example of additive changes not playing friendly is when consumers store the responses in a database or in memory. If they have constrained character sizes, your additive changes may effectively break their applications. So in my personal opinion, based on my experience and the types of projects that I've worked on, additive strategies may work for smaller projects with very limited capacity for change. And they're really great for those kinds of projects, but they most likely won't work for enterprise applications or applications that are meant to evolve and grow and add new business logic over time. A strategy that is commonly used in large-scale applications and one that I have used throughout my career is the explicit versioning strategy. It's far more suitable for complex change management and it's something you should know quite well if you want to work for a large-scale organization. The next video will be about this, so make sure to subscribe and stay tuned.